Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar um, for you to meet your residence managers. This is for anyone who is going to be moving into Archwood House this September. Um, just a few moments while uh, students are still joining, if you'd like to pop in the question box um, where you're joining us from today, so whichever country, city you're going to be joining us from, um, it'd be great to see where you are today. Special shout out as well to anyone who's maybe um, calling from somewhere where you're in a different time zone um, and you had to either stay up quite late or wake up super early. Um, we really appreciate it and it's lovely to see. Um, okay, so we've got a few people who've already said, someone from Croatia, someone from Sao, Sao Paulo in Brazil, someone from Bedford, uh, someone from London, so not too far, someone from Paris, France, and they've also added a baguette, I like that, um, someone from Kathmandu in Nepal, um, California, someone from Cumbria, someone from India, another person from India. Um, someone from Hamburg in Germany, uh, someone else from London, someone from Bath, Kazakhstan, uh, someone from Yorkshire, um, India, Bristol, India again, a real good mix here actually, it's really great to see um, so many of you joining us, so yeah, a very warm welcome to everyone. So just a few points before we get into it, um, just to say this webinar is being recorded today. So um, if there's something that you don't catch or you wanna watch it back later, or maybe a family member does, then um, we will be sending out the recording to you all um, so you can watch it back um, whenever you have some free time. The other thing is we'll also have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So um, if there's anything you think about or don't think we've covered or want us to clarify, just pop your questions in the question box and we'll try and answer as many as possible at the end. Just to say, um, depending on how we're doing for time, we might not get to answer all the questions during the session. If that's the case, then we'll um, make sure that we get back to you um, via email before the end of this week. So don't panic, we will still reply to everything that you've asked. Um, it's just, you know, time-wise, whether we'll be able to get through them all. So um, just to say, my name's Sarah, I work in the accommodation services team, um, and I'm joined today by Susanna and Chris, um, who are based at Archwood House, and I'm now gonna hand over to them to um, do the presentation part of the webinar. Nice to meet you all. Hello. So we're going to start the um, presentation today. Um, so the agenda um, for today is um, we're going to talk about what you need to do uh, to know before you arrive. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to see the slides soon. Um, we're going to discuss the, uh, there you are, rent information what to do when you arrive at homes, what do residence managers do, what should be in your flat or in your studio, the facilities that we've got at Archwood House. Sarah's going to talk to you about host life and then back to Chris, health and safety information and the support that is available for you at UAL. So what do you need to know before you arrive? We've got a knee induction and that is available to you um, from your portal. Can you please uh, try to complete it before you arrive? It'd be very good to know your um, arrival date and details so that we can plan better. Um, please try to go through the uh, guidebook. There's loads of information. Um, most of them, we cover them here, but there's some additional bits that you might be interested in. And if you have any other um, questions, um, you can contact accommodation at arts.ac.uk. Um, okay, so regarding your rent information, the payment date are the following. So you've got the first installment on the 2nd of September. The second payment is uh, on the 8th of January, and the third payment is on the 8th of April. So 2nd of September, 8th of January, and 8th of April. Um, 
then uh, if you have a student loan you can organize um, the payment dates with them and change them uh, change them accordingly and there are different ways that you can pay so you can pay in full using your credit card or a debit card uh, you can pay termly and again you must set up a, a payment plan uh, with with your uh, with your debit or credit cards or you can pay by bank transfer um, this is an option uh, for most international students, um, but anyone can obviously um, use this option. Okay, so rent information. So um, we have uh, at Arch with us, we have a finance administrator for, for our whole, and you can get in touch with him on uh, using the uh, email address that is provided here. So at confinance at arts.ac.uk or the telephone number. So if you have any question, especially regarding the payment plan, uh, regarding your rent or uh, changing um, a payment card, they, they can help you with that. But really any other questions regarding finance. So what to do when you arrive at home? So, um, we will have a process um, when you come through the door you will see um, lots of balloons uh, to make you feel happy lots of people to welcome you and but we'll also ask you for your passport or driving license um, we'll ask you to sign in some uh, check-in uh, papers so there's a couple of uh, documents and then we'll give you the keys um, most probably there will be someone to show you upstairs where your room is. Um, your friend and family can, uh, can help you to move in. They can come in with you, that's, that's not a problem. Try to be uh, as quick as possible because especially on the 9th of September, we will have a large intake of students. We are expecting about 330 people. So as you can see, we try to move through the um, front of the building quite quickly. So trolleys are available, so you can use them, and uh, but please make sure you return them at the desk as soon as you, you're done. And uh, there's no parking on site, uh, so we will send you a separate email to uh, to explain better regarding the, the drop-offs, but yes, there is no parking, so we need to um, follow quite strict rules not to block the road outside. What do residence managers do? Um, not much really, just here to look pretty, <laughs> if we try. So um, you can contact me uh, using the, the details provided in your guidebook, so by email, or you can simply just come at the desk and, uh, and, and ask for me. Um, I work at, from, from our two hours, so I'm, I'm here most days uh, during working hours, so I'm available to see you. Um, what can I help you with? Well, uh, proof of address, references, if you have any queries about your room or your flat, um, I can help you if you have any issues with your flatmates. Um, obviously, I will encourage you first to try to get to know each other and familiarize yourself with your flatmates, but any, any issues you have, obviously, I'm here to help. Um, any queries with your accommodation, rent or tenancy agreement or i can sign post you um, to all the other services that the university provides uh, such as well-being and and finance student services and, and so on what should be in your studio or flat well we provide you with a mattress protector and this must need fit uh, on the bed uh, before you sleep on it please um, <laughs> um, a cutting mat um, and take a look at the uh, host guide um, for the list of your of the items that should be included in your um, in your room uh, so you have an inventory and we ask you to please uh, complete that and return to us 48 hours before uh, sorry not before after your arrival um, we have a charges list, so be mindful that if you, um, if anything is damaged or broken, um, we will charge you. Um, of course, we will take into consideration wear and tear, so don't worry about that. 
we'll also um, do a kitchen inspection to make sure the standard of cleanliness is 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 good and um, unikit sorry unikit out um, this can be arranged and delivered to um, to your room so you want me to? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> oh, that's that's you. Know. Okay. So what is in Archwood House? So you have your refuse, which is your general waste, and your recycling facilities. They're clearly labelled um, in the bin store, and you can collect the um, clear bags and bin bags at reception. Um, we've got two laundry rooms, one for the A block and uh, a large one for the B, C, and D block, and that's 24-hour access, and it's. Um, you have to download an app to use that. There's, there's no much cash involved. It's all paid online via the app. We have a large common room um, and a cinema room, which you can book out. We just need three days notice minimum. Uh, and we've also got a games room with um, table tennis and shuffleboard. We have a um, prayer room, which you can use when uh, you can, it is currently locked, but if you need it unlocking, um, come and speak to a member of staff. Um, we have 24 hour security uh, on site, um, so that's a minimum of two persons on site at all times. Um, we take in all your posts and letters, any, any letters will go into your mailbox, any large post um, boxes will be held in our post room, which you can come and collect after they've been uploaded onto your post tracker, which will be explained in your welcome pack. Okay, so um, I just want to go over a bit about Hall's Life. So Hall's Life is the events and wellbeing programme that's run throughout our UAL um, halls. So um, the Hall's Life is made up of individual halls committee members. So for each hall, there'll be um, a committee who are made up of students just like yourselves. Some of you might even actually have signed up to be a hall committee member. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the halls committee members will be arranging weekly events um, for you to attend at your halls. Um, and there will also be external events um, for you to get out and explore London, especially if it's your first time living in London. There's um, events such as theatre trips and kind of visits to galleries and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's a good way of meeting other students, finding like minded people um, and to make new friends. What I would say as well about for the weekly events that are held in your halls, if you've got any ideas of what you would like to see, maybe events that you'd like to put on, um, I would say speak to your halls committee members um, and maybe give them some suggestions because they're there to, to provide um, good events for you and things that they that you would like to attend. So yeah, when you soon after you move in, if you kind of find them and speak to them, that is a great way of kind of making sure that the events are something you would like to attend. Um, there'll be lots and lots of events um, in the weeks after check-in. So even if you're not moving on in on the exact day of the start of your tenancy, there'll still be lots of events that are held throughout the month of September. And the best way to find out about these is by either following us on Instagram at UAL Halls Life or by checking out our events page. And that's um, shown at the bottom there. It's hallslife.arts.ac.uk forward slash events. All of this information is in your guidebook as well, so um, don't worry about having to write this all down at one time. It is still in your guidebook as well. The other part of um, Hall's life is the well-being aspect. So as well as kind of the fun events, it's also um, making sure that um, you feel supported and that there's things that can that can help you out um, with things that, that come up in life. So um, kind of some of the free um, available things that you will find in your halls is um, free dried food products which will be in the the common room so if you just head down with a plastic container and um, you can kind of fill up on things like rice um, and lentils to try and make um, a free healthy um, quick meal. Um, the other thing we have is free period products which will be available across each of the halls and um, the location of that is um, to be confirmed but if you ever do need any products then they will be made available to you. 
Um, we will also be having welcome wellbeing boxes. So there are, um, if you need a bit of a pick me up or feeling a bit low, um, then they'll just be kind of freebies maybe to just help with mindful activities um, and things that you might might like to try out. There'll also be access to STI testing, pregnancy tests and free condoms as well. Um, so if you ever need to contact them or feel that you, you need something in particular, you can contact them at hereforyou at arts.ac.uk. Um, as well as kind of the free products and advice, there is also events that will be run by um, Hall's Life um, that are well-being. So um, that will be a coffee and a chat sessions, well-being events that will be themed um, for each each month, um, and also taboo Tuesdays. So that's topics that maybe you might um, feel you haven't, you don't really know much about. You want to explore it more, but you might be a bit not very confident in speaking with family or friends about it. So it's um, topics such as um, consent and what to know about consent, um, especially during your time at university. Um, you'll see some of these posters as well. So they'll be um, around your halls as well. So if you ever feel that you need some help or just want to reach out to find out a bit more about the services that here for you offer, um, then either email them or um, use the QR code, um, the QR code linked on there. And that's it for Who's Life. Okay, back to me. And um, we've got the health and the safety information. So we do take fire safety um, very seriously at Hartford House and across UAL. Um, so we do a weekly fire alarm test. So at Tuesday at 11 a.m. you will hear the fire alarm going off for maybe let's say 30 seconds, one minute. That is just us doing our um, compliance testing, making sure it's working. You don't need to evacuate. However, we do do termly fire drills. Um, so once per term we do do fire uh, and fire evacuation uh, run to make sure you know what to do in the event of a, an emergency. Um, so when you get here, you'll want to familiarise familiarise yourself with the building um, where your nearest fire escapes are, your fire exit route from your flat. Um, it is signposted and it's, it's quite clear. But uh, for instance, you can't use the, the lift when the fire alarm is activated. Um, you have to take the staircase. Um, but it's only floors one to five, so it's not too bad. Um, so when students first move in, then yeah, Maybe some aren't that very good at cooking yet, or maybe they're smoking in the rooms. <laughs> so there will be fire alarm activations in the first few weeks. It's just inevitable. Um, so don't worry, the fire alarm is not faulty. It's just doing its job. Um, we do it, investigate every fire alarm activation. So common causes are actually deodorants in rooms too near the smoke detector. Um, when you're hair straightening the vapor, if that's too close to the fire alarm, that will activate it as well. Vaping and smoking will definitely set off the fire alarm, so that is banned indoors. There is a designated smoking area outside, which is sheltered, so please do use that. So you need to let us know if you have any mental or physical health um, conditions that are seen or unseen, and then um, we will work with you to create a PEEP, which is a personal emergency evacuation plan which is where we <clears throat> discuss with you how you would evacuate in the event of a, um, a fire alarm or other emergency situation. Um, it could be just as simple as arranging for us to phone, give you a phone call or budding you up with someone in the halls to make sure that you can uh, evacuate safely. So doing your coursework or art in halls. So. If you're in doubt as to what you are and aren't allowed to do, you need to contact us um, and we will tell you what you can and can't do. Um, it's also in the terms and conditions of your tenancy agreement. So we do we do issue a cutting mat to protect the desk because you can do small crafts in your room, but we see you cannot use your room as an art studio, for instance. Like you cannot use, um, shouldn't be using spray paints, you shouldn't have naked flames. Hazardous chemicals should be stored on site at university in the correct locations. Um, anything hazardous found, um, which instance during a room inspection, 
uh, it will be confiscated. Um, and any work that you do inside your room, um, it shouldn't disturb your neighbours. So if, for instance, you're doing loud work, staff might come and ask you to uh, stop making that noise. There is space in the common room for you to do, say, bigger group work, for instance, which is um, you can you can make loud noise in there until 11, 11 p.m. Okay, so support available at UAL. So for your personal safety, um, when you're traveling around London, um, we strongly recommend you using licensed cabs, whether that's black taxis, Uber or Addison Lee. Um, City Mapper is a great app for getting around London. Strongly recommend you downloading that. It's really, really useful. Um, Archer House is quite well connected. There's plenty of buses outside and um, there's Peckham Mara Tube Station, which is a 10, 10 minute walk from here. Um, so yeah, do download that app, it's great. Um, keep your valuables hidden yet yeah, when you're exiting the tube or uh, buildings, just, just be aware of your surroundings. Um, that's just anywhere, and that goes for everywhere in London, not just Peckham. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we have members, Ooh, go back please, Sarah. Yeah, we've got members of staff at reception 24 hours a day. Um, so if you need to, if you need any help, there's always someone there to ask. Or there's, um, we have site mobiles and reception numbers which are advertised around the site. So you can be able to contact members of staff at any time. Um, tailgate into that is just basically do not let anyone follow you into the building unless they have their uh, key card of their own. If you suspect someone has followed you in, just report it to the reception straight away and they will deal with it. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Okay, so we are there to help support you. Um, but if you need further support, you can we can signpost you in the in the right direction to the relevant services. Um, you can contact UAL Student Services at any time if you're struggling or feel that you need support. Um, they offer a range of services, including student advisors, counsellors health advisors and chaplains, disability advisors, dyslexia coordinators and specialist tutors. And you can contact the student services by visiting the web page there. Great, thank you both. Um, just to say as well, the web page for student services is also in the guidebook too, so you don't have to worry about writing that one down. Um, it, is, it is there on, in the guidebook. Um, so yes, we'll move on to questions and answers in just a second. Just to say, well, I'll leave this page up um, as it has our main website page, um, also our main email contact. So if there's anything that you think of after today that you want to ask us about, if you send it to accommodation at arts.ac.uk, a member of the team will get back to you. Um, or alternatively, you can also call them on the numbers provided. Okay, so we're going to go to questions now, and I think probably the most important question that we've had all day, um, someone has asked if there is a teapot provided in the halls, which is a new one, <laughs> I haven't seen that asked before, <laughs> um, it was one of the Yorkshire people, um, but yeah, is there is there a teapot provided in the halls? No, no. there's kettles and toasters, but we don't offer, offer teapots now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, there's a few questions. I'm going to group them together, but a few people have asked, um, are the rooms assigned um, before they arrive or upon arrival? Um, and also, will they know the uh, room number before they arrive? So, um... The room numbers will definitely be confirmed just before the arrival. I don't know if we'll have time to tell you much ahead of your arrival, but definitely when you check in, we'll tell you your room number and, and show you to, to your room and the block. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and just to say as well, if anyone's worried about because they're, le they're arriving later that everyone else has maybe picked their rooms and then they'll have to just make do. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. Your room is assigned to you before you check in based on what your accepted room offer was. So your room won't change because of the fact that you've checked in late. That's not the way that we operate. So 
you're not going to be at a disadvantage if you check in later than your tenancy start date and um, so no pressure in in that in that way um so and the same goes that someone's asked when will we get to know our flatmates and that will in the same way that will be once you move into to the hall then you'll um be aware of who you're living with we're unable to provide information on other, other students before before you do check in um someone has asked um whether people who don't live at archwood house could come and go to the use the cinema room with you know as a guest can they can they bring people can students bring their guests in to come to yes. the cinema room mm -hmm. yes you can obviously the cinema room is not that large i think it, it takes up 20 20, yeah. 20 people so as long as we are within the 20 uh, visitors, well, 20 people inside the, the cinema room, then we find you just, you must provide uh, the names of your visitors, sign them in at the reception as you would with your normal visitors and, and that's it, and sign them out when they, when they leave. You must be with them all, at all the time and then that's it. Just to explain that cinema, actually, there's a QR code on the mm -hmm. door of the cinema room and you would scan that and fill in the, um, the online application form mm -hmm. um, and then we would either approve or decline it but usually we approve it and then that's where you would submit your list of your guests you would say whether they are a uil student or an external um, friend but yeah um someone's asked here a few people have asked about what's provided in the flat um, in terms of, maybe I'll just read through them and then if you just answer yes, no, I think that'll probably be easier. Um, so the first one is, is an iron an ironing board provided? Yeah. A shared one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the next one is, is there a hoover um, or cleaning supplies provided? There is a hoover, again, to be shared amongst the flatmates. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the next one, um, are baking trays available or would we need to bring our own? Um, the, the, the oven's got its standard metal wrapped and then one tray underneath. Yeah. You'd need to bring your own um, baking trays for putting food on, for instance, yeah. Yeah, and that kind of goes for all utensils. So you've got the, the microwave, fridge, um, toaster, kettle, but yeah. beyond that, within the kitchen, you need to bring your own cutlery, oh, plate, yeah. mugs, pots and pans. Yeah. Um, and for the, the pan, pots and pans, do they need the induction? No, just standard, no. standard pans, pots and yeah. pans. Yeah, that's great. Um, I think as standard sometimes now, they just come with the induction thing as well. But yeah, yeah that's, that's good to know if anyone's yeah. just think from home. Um, someone, a few people have asked actually, how many people would they be sharing a kitchen with if it's a shared flat? It varies depending on which flat you're in. So it could be six, it could be eight, or it could be nine. Mm -hmm. Depends which flat you're in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, you'd have, how it works is basically to be, if you share a kitchen with nine, you'd be three big fridge freezers, to be two hobs, two ovens, two microwaves, two um, sinks. Um, and then you'd have kitchen cupboards, which are, we have one assigned per flat. So as you come in, you would choose the cupboard that is you know, your bedroom door that's written on that cupboard. Mm -hmm. If there's any spare, um, you'd have to negotiate that with your um, fellow flatmates to see how to use those communal cupboards. Perfect. Um, someone's asked, uh, two people actually have asked about storage in the kitchen. So is there a designated cupboards, um, fridge space for students? How does that work? Yes, we're currently labeling after the, so, so that you know, we are cleaning all the rooms and signing them off as we speak. So once the cleaners uh, will have finished um, cleaning all the kitchens, then we will uh, tag the cupboards um, according to the room numbers. So, so as Chris was saying, you will have your own uh, cupboard, plus there will be some extra ones that 
you'll have to negotiate with your flatmates. Um, I'm sure there are there's quite a few spare ones. But in terms of storing anything else, we encourage to um, yeah uh, to leave uh, not to leave much outside on the worktop. Uh, definitely not food, but I'm, I'm saying in terms of uh, dishes and, and cups and we encourage you to store them away because, um, yeah, it is a big kitchen, but still limited to the number of people that are using it. Um, so, yeah, and the same goes for the fridge. So there's a lot of uh, fridge and freezer space um, that you will be able to share with everyone else. Yeah. Great. Um, a few questions here about guests, overnight guests. Um, would you be able to explain the rules around students who um, are going to have visitors and guests stay over? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, you are allowed to have overnight uh, guests. Uh, there is a limit, so please refer to the terms and condition on your contract. So the way it works is you send us an email ahead of time to let us know you will have an overnight visitor. We normally tend to just approve it, but we need to know um, so that we monitor the amount of people that are on site. And um, also, if uh, they're staying in, a, if, if you're staying in a, in a studio, I guess it's easier, but if you share with a number of people, you will also need to tell uh, your flatmates that you have someone visiting because it wouldn't be fair on them just to bring someone or meet someone brand new in the kitchen uh, first thing in the morning. So yes, basically that's what it is. So whenever your visitor will come, you sign them in at the desk, at the front desk, and they will have to be with you at all times. You can't go off to uni and leave the visitor in, uh, in your room. That's not allowed. So as long as you are, um, in your in your room or in the accommodation in a common room cinema whenever wherever the guest has to be with you if you leave they've got to leave with you um sign them in and sign them out great they can sleep in the kitchen they yeah, can't sleep in, the in the your bedroom yes yeah. yes exactly mm -hmm. um okay next question um uh, Sorry, it's going through. Um, someone's asked just maybe just as reassurance, who can enter students' rooms when they are not there? Maybe just explain. So, for instance, um, if it was a member of staff, staff would, if we needed to gain access to your room for maintenance or to carry out a room inspection, um, we would give you 48 hours notice of that. Um, you'd get an, an email about that. Um, you, some, you, you don't have to be present, but you can, if you wish to be present, you have to let us know. Um, your flatmates cannot get into your room. Your flatmates can get into your flat entrance, but only your key card will work on your door. Um, staff do have MasterCards if we ever need to get into someone's room in an emergency, for instance, and we do have MasterCards. But the, the locks on the doors log all the information. So the activity um, is all recorded. No one could get into your room without that the, the lock registering that information. Great. Um... Oh, and you, sorry, you can lock your door from the inside. Got to say that. Like, as you're in your room, you can lock the door from the inside. And we, yes. we can't get it. Someone said, in the shared kitchens, is there a table for, for them to sit and, you know, to eat together sociably? Yes, yes, absolutely. There's, there's a big table, you'll see. Table yeah. with and benches, yeah. Benches, and there's a large sofa. Um, yeah, so there's, there's quite quite a few seats. Yeah, there's a coffee table with a sofa around it and a, a TV, um, which you can connect your devices to. Yeah, great. Um, someone's asked about, um, for the shared bath, Bathrooms, are these cleaned by staff or is this up to the students to do? And if by staff, how frequently are they done? 
So normally they get done every Wednesday. Um, so we encourage everyone obviously to um, clean after yourself. So if you're taking a shower, if you're using the toilet, obviously try to leave it as clean as possible. Uh, be considerate, but uh, we do clean them weekly and normally on a Wednesday. Sometimes we, uh, we do Wednesday and, and Thursday depending uh, on the workload the cleaners have, but once a week. Great. Um, someone's asked a couple of questions here. So the first one is about Unikitel and what to do if they haven't yet got their room number, well, they haven't got their room number. Um, so in these situations, if you just put down the Archwood House address, which is in your guidebook, um, and just put your name and also if you can put next to your name your student ID number and then um, the team there can keep it safe until you get there. What I would say though is that you can pick your arrival date for your um, Unikit out delivery. So try as much as possible to put it as the date that you're going to be getting there or soon after um, because there isn't tons and tons of space um, at Archwood House so if all students um, arrange for deliveries before they were there. We'd, we'd run out of run out of space in the in the storage room. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you are um, arranging any deliveries. It would be really great if you could get it for the day that you move in, um, and that means as well that we're able to allocate it and make sure we keep it safe for your arrival. The other thing that this person has asked is about the size of the bed. Um, what size is the bed? Just to confirm. <laughs> So the majority are small doubles, mm -hmm. which in UK terms like four foot, we call them a four foot mattress, but it's a small double. And then there's a few rooms, um, like large studios, which have the double, the actual standard double size, but 95% of the mattresses are small doubles. Great. Um... Is there, someone's asked if there's any cleaning services providing, I don't know, maybe if you could just go over what the arrangements are um, within the inside and outside the flats, I guess, for cleaning. Well, you're responsible for cleaning your own kitchen and corridor. Um, and room. And room, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, like there's nothing to stop you booking a cleaner. You'd have to just let us know and then sign them in as a normal guest if you wanted to hire a cleaner um, to clean your room or to clean your kitchen. You could all join together and employ a cleaner. Um, you just have to inform us first. And sorry, to, and be present as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do do kitchen inspections. Um, periodically the schedule for every two weeks currently and um, so we would come and inspect your kitchen on certain areas um, if you pass great if you fail you get 48 hours to fix the issues we've highlighted and if you don't manage to do that then we will um, book in um, a cleaner to come and clean your kitchen uh, at a cost to the students quite high cost too yeah what the the advice is really when you soon after you move in um the flats that seem to get it right is where they set up a whatsapp group quite early on and they're able to work out between themselves who will do what tasks as part of the the shared cleaning responsibilities and um, so yeah it's good to have those conversations early so that no one's thinking someone else is going to do it um, and you all know where you stand and what you need to do to make sure you do pass the, the inspections and you don't get any fines. Um, oh, also, sorry to interrupt you Sarah, so we, we have um, a cleaning rota for the kitchen and the corridors so, so if, you, um, if you're having this conversation and as Sarah said it's, it's, it would be good, it's a good advice to do. So um, we have a cleaning rota that we can give you and you can fill it in with the, with your flatmates. Um, so I don't know, someone uh, can be in charge for a week to mop the floor, somebody else to throw the rubbish and, and so on and on. So I noticed that that works quite well. Also to say about the kitchen inspection is, as my colleague Chris said, is every, they are every two weeks. And we will keep them like that uh, unless 
we see that the kitchen or um, will fall below, below standard, in which case we'll start doing them weekly. So if, if it's a good and clean kitchen, we'll keep it like that. Um, but if not, it'd be more regular. Um, great. Someone has asked, actually two people have asked about Wi-Fi. Is it Wi-Fi in the halls um, or Ethernet? Which, um, which so, would it work? So, yes, there is Wi-Fi um, in the hall. You just have to register. But it'll be your student ID yeah. number and the password you've set up um, when you enrolled or um, if you're you know, for your student portal, uh, it'll be the same password for that. Perfect. Um, someone's asked if there's any outdoor seating available um, at the halls. Yes, we have an internal courtyard with uh, some benches all around. So it's, it's nice to sit outside, especially days like today where it's nice and sunny. I don't yeah. know how long it's going to last, but by all means, you can sit there. Yeah, perfect. Um, so someone's also asked about kind of a checklist of what to bring just to say this is in your guidebook i think it's actually called what what to bring to halls um so yeah if you just have a look through the contents page in the guidebook you'll be able to see what items are provided in the halls including in studios and then what also uh, the list of items that you should think about bringing um yeah, and also you can, there's lots of shops and things nearby to Archwood House, so don't feel as if you have to bring it all with you. You can maybe just get there, have a think about what you want to buy and just um, buy it as you go along, rather than buying lots and lots before and then by the end of the year thinking you didn't even use some of the things you brought at the beginning. Mm. Um, can I just add, someone has asked me earlier, um, send me an email to find out about check-in day so don't worry if you can't come on the ninth or on the second uh, when your contract starts you can come pretty much any uh, any time after that if you have an issue with your cast it's the same you just drop us an email so that we know when you're coming and uh, and that's it if you can come on the 15th you can come on the 20th um when, whenever you are available Great. Um, I'm just having a look. Some of, as I said, some of the questions are quite specific. So for those people who have asked um, specific questions about their individual needs, um, we will get back to you. Um, but I'm trying to just capture questions that kind of would apply for ev to everyone at the moment. But your um, question won't go unanswered. We will get back to you um, separately. Um, by the end of this week. Uh, someone has asked about if someone's leaving for a few nights, do they need to let the site team know? Um, how would they go about that? Not for a few nights, but if you're going away for longer, um, I think you can do it through your portal. If not, you can also come to reception and, and let us know. Mm -hmm. um, and then someone, a few people have also said about um, due to flights um, and when they're going to be arriving, it will be quite late in the evening. Are they still going to be able to check in as normal um, at that time? Yeah. Absolutely. We are open 24-7. But then again, if you know that your flight, for example, is, is coming at 10, 11 o'clock at night, just, just drop us an email so that we, are know that we know that you are coming. But anyway, we'll be here, so don't worry about it. Somebody will be here. Great. Um, and let's just see. Um, and again, sorry, just going back to the parking for check-in. Mm -hmm. The just to maybe just to clarify again about that, whether there's any availability for visitors to do drop-offs, what what that looks like, or something they'll find oh. out. We are currently speaking to the council about this because we do not have any uh, parking space, no dropping off areas. Um, there is a road called Bonner Road, um, and which runs parallel to the main road. And 
that is uh, the best bet probably drive into that and get the taxi driver or mom and dad whoever is driving you to uh, try to to stop there um i don't have much more information in terms of uh a parking base at the minute because i'm waiting for confirmation from the council but at the moment we don't have anything to offer you there are a number of uh roads around here where they are free parking on a Saturday and Sunday. So we'll send out um, a, a map about this and, uh, and instructions. But if you want to contact us separately, please do and be very happy to explain. Perfect. Um, someone's just asked about food and is it that people have to make their own food or is there any food offering? <laughs> Um, within the halls um, mm -hmm. yeah just to say that they are all um, self-catered rooms we don't offer any kind of food no. service within the halls um, lots, lots of students though do like Uber Eats and Just Eat and Deliveroo so yeah. that's really common for students to um, get food delivered if you are getting anything delivered make sure that you you know check the app Make sure you're looking at when the person's going to arrive um, and head down to reception to meet them. We can't give out your details. Often the, the driver will say, can you give them a call? We obviously can't, can't do that on, on their behalf. Um, so you need to kind of be quite alert and ready to go down to collect your hot food so that it doesn't go back to the provider. Just to say as well, we are not allowed to um... To take to, to keep your your food uh, reception so if you're not present unfortunately we'll have to turn them away yeah but they that's do the have thing. yeah but if you do a tesco online shop that's the same thing for that you have to be present to accept that we will if you're not there we will turn it away yeah but on on all the apps nowadays and all the services you can make sure that you put in your phone numbers the exact details of what they need to do when they arrive so just be really clear to whoever it is the company that they need to give you a call as soon as they they get to reception um, and then you'll be able to come down and meet them. Um, okay, I'm going to leave it there. Um, just to say, yeah, as I said, any questions that haven't been answered, you will get a response to your queries um, and that will be sent by the end of this week. Um, and also the video, the recording of this webinar will be made available. So you'll get that over the next few days as well, should you wish to um, watch it back. Um, any questions that you have after this, then um, email accommodation at arts.ac.uk and um, either one of us or a member of the central team will get back to you with a, with a response. Um, just just to say uh, thank you very much again for joining today. We really look forward to seeing you in a few weeks' time. Um, yeah, I don't know, if Chris or Susanna, you've got anything to add? Or... No, that's all. Yeah. Look forward to meeting yeah, yeah. you very soon. Yeah. Perfect. Well, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day and we'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.